Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Modern Health with Dr. Jane. Today I have Marishka, who was one of my patients, and Marishka is going to share her story with all of you today. I want to thank you for being here, uh, but why don't you give a quick 30-second introduction of who you are, what you do, where you're from. Yeah, so I am Marishka, and I live in Calgary. I'm married, and I have two cats. Um, I'm currently a dedicated student. Um and I had experienced uh, significant pain, um, menstrual pain that was ongoing for uh, going on eight years um, and um, discovered Jane and thought, well, this is, you know, something I haven't tried yet. I've tried a lot uh, to try and rid the pain um, and uh, engage your services. Yeah. And here you are. I mean, so let's go to the beginning. Uh, you said you've started to experience menstrual pain that was pretty severe. Can you tell people a little bit more about kind of the level of pain you experienced? Do you know why it started just kind of, and then your journey to finding me, some of the things that you said you've tried. Uh, I think it would be really helpful for people to hear what you have tried and like what didn't work, maybe what provided some relief, uh, but wasn't quite enough. Yeah, so I have tried uh, various modalities, everything from the traditional conventional um, GP referral to a gynecologist, examined by the gynecologist, nothing physiologically wrong, um, couldn't figure out. The pain was a 10 out of 10, uh, absolutely extreme, so severe that I really candidly just wanted to die. Um, it was I, nothing I would do would give me any relief and uh, I would be throwing up um, constantly over and over again. It was, it was unbearable. Like I would, I, I couldn't, you know, carry on um, my life like that really. So I, I tried, as I said, conventional methods. I also tried various healing modalities, um, acupuncture, energy healing, um, and other naturopathic doctors. <laughs> totally, yeah. Yeah. And do you and remember then, why, like, do you remember why, because it's not something that you've suffered with for your whole life. It's just something that started. Do you remember the process in terms of like how it started? Was it just one day you started to have heavy periods? Or was there a buildup to it? Yeah, it, it did happen like that. It was very sudden onset and very acute. Um, and I was just, I, I don't know, there was no really real triggers. It's just one day I just had a really, really painful cramping cycle. And I thought that's very strange because my entire life, I've never had uh, menstrual issues. I never had cramps. I never had pain at all, like at all. It was just like any other day of the month for me. Um, and it never interfered with my life whatsoever. Um, it just was very cute, sudden onset. Yeah. And what are the things, so painful period, do you remember what else were some prominent things in your life before you found me that were really bothering you? Uh, well, I, there was other symptoms that I had at around the time I engaged your services. Um, you know, I, there was hormonal issues, like, you know, I had, you know, energy issues, sleep issues. I was uh, also recovering from long COVID symptoms as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just very strange. Like I had, uh, you know, involuntary muscle tremors. I had tingling and numbness in my uh, limbs, um, uh, visual disturbances, um, a lot of digestive issues, Um yeah. yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's to, like really impact uh, yeah. your life. Um, what was, what was different? Why did you decide to work with me? And, you know, how, how did you come to that decision? Uh, so through my husband, um, who referred me as he was involved in a business transaction with a family member of yours and um, just happened to mention um, your specialty and that you were um, known for, um, you know, helping women with hormonal issues and fertility issues. And um, so I thought, well, you know what, it's worth a try. I mean, at this stage, I've, I've tried so much I, and I didn't want to give up. And I thought, okay, well, since you have a reputation of helping people, um, I'm going to, 
I'm going to invest in, in, in getting, you know, um, engaging in your services. Yeah. And talk about like, what were the big, what was really different? What was the aha and the kind of the big things that we did that you found were very different from what you've done before? Because you've done a yeah. lot of stuff and it's not like it was bad stuff. It was just maybe out of order or something, right? Right. And I think that that's, uh, that's key too, is the fact that you had a method that was sequential and orderly and it made sense so um i think one of the big differences between um your uh theoretical orientation and others that i've tried is um the emphasis on detox and i love your bath water analogy because it just makes so much sense um and that's a visual that uh, you know i've carried through the entire process it's like well yes like i had an extremely healthy lifestyle i didn't do anything bad you know no drinking no smoking no you know processed foods i didn't i haven't even had i don't even eat sugar at all like i really was extremely focused on my healthy lifestyle and and like you said, like, you know, you, you've got this clogged system that has, um, you know, all these toxins that have been accumulating and not flushing through your body. And so everything that you're doing that's supposed to help you is really just kind of floating around in dirty bath water. And um, my, my system, I believe, was quite clogged for, for some reason. I guess my digestive system wasn't working properly. So you really um, emphasized a methodical approach to the different phases of detox that made sense to you with your knowledge, which I wasn't aware of. And, you know, clear this out before this out in, in a, a set sequence. And um, I think that made a huge difference. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain the bathtub analogy because I use that a lot. And thanks for mentioning that, yeah, you've already done a lot of the stuff, right? Like you were, yeah. you were it, it, maybe even to a fault where it's like, you couldn't have any sugar because as soon as you had sugar, your system would be reacting, which is one of the things we talked mm -hmm. about that it's like, well, there's, then there's no freedom, right? To be yeah. able to have things and have resiliency in the system that, hey, I should be able to go out for dinner and not worry that yeah. I'm going to have dis digestive distress or I'm going to get sick or I'm going to get nasally or whatever, but the bathtub analogy, the idea here is that you're swimming, you're the goldfish that's swimming in a bathtub and the shower head is your environment, what's coming in. And the cleaner we can make that, the better it will be. But if the drain is clogged or if the sewer is backing up, then it's just going to back up into that water. So cleaning the products, whether it's your food, whether it's your water, whether it's, uh, and I think the big thing you didn't have yet is the, the clean water. That's something that we did uh, right away. And mm -hmm. I- I, I don't even know if we ever followed up on this because you had like a metallic taste in the mouth when you first started drinking that. Did that then stop? It did resolve. Yeah, I had, um, I, I've never experienced that before. It was like this like acidic lemony kind of metallic taste. And I thought, what is this? Like, is there something wrong with this water purifier? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then it went away because it was almost like your system just wasn't used to. And I remember we said, mm -hmm. my cat is not drinking it either. And I was like, does your, <laughs> does your partner have it? If not, the cat doesn't count. And then we just got to give you, <laughs> yeah. gotta give you time. Yeah. No, but it was essentially, just me. It's, sorry, go ahead. Oh, it was just me. I, mm -hmm. My husband, Jamie, um, he didn't experience the same taste from the water. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Sometimes the body like rejects it a little bit because it's not mm -hmm. used to it, but yeah, mm -hmm. getting that colon and that sewer cleaned out if you will. And then the drain, and that's what I equate to like your liver, your kidneys, your gallbladder. And many of us have toxins that have accumulated for a really long time that we haven't been aware of. Like for example, our water, you know, our water supply is huge. And so it's, I'm, I'm glad that you're bringing this up because it's like, yeah, that was, there were some really simple things that we incorporated that I feel like, mm -hmm. uh, do you remember how long it took for your periods to improve? Yeah. So at first there was a little bit of, um, when I started doing the caster packs, I noticed there was a little bit of increased pain for the next period. Um, and I got discouraged, but you're like, no, no, you're on the right track. Just hang in. And sure enough, um, I think it was the second period it started getting better. And then after that, there was just no looking back. Like I, I've had either ranging from zero pain to like just minor discomfort, like definitely within the normal range and not yeah, interfering like in my life. Kind of oh, no. 
Yeah, that's amazing. So the first thing was the detox. What other, would you say, a couple other things that you felt like were different and really helped to move the needle for Mm -hmm. you? Yeah, so the emphasis on like the complete lifestyle holistic package, I mean, like a dietary change, I definitely wasn't getting enough protein, I realized that. Um, so, um, and, you know, incorporating some technology, uh, you know, uh, like red light therapy and um, a nebulizer and um, red uh, massage uh, or um, uh, sauna you know, um, things that I hadn't considered before to just really get things moving along. And, and, um, and then you were very, like, supportive and available. Uh, So, you know, anytime I was having any symptoms or any questions, you were right there to help me and guide me and support me, which I felt like I'd never had that before. It was always just like an appointment once a week or two and um just I just felt unsupported so that was a really significant difference for me um yeah yeah I think that like there's a lot of challenge I'd love for you to talk about some of the challenges going back because there was some challenges especially in this first couple of months where you're waiting and it's like this anxiety around your period you're like oh I don't want this to come again and you don't know but it's mm-hmm. also going to give us a lot of information, you know, what, what we're working on. What were some challenges for you, whether it was like physical, you know, mental, emotional, that yeah. came as you were going through the process? Yeah, definitely. So I had a lot of anxiety um, and I was like at times feeling like really overwhelmed and just like, am I on the right track? You know, I just. And you're like, you know, hang in there. I've already tried a bunch of stuff. (laughs) Like, why is this different? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, I was experiencing anxiety, you know, depression, mood swings, um, just like, you know, feeling like maybe I wasn't getting anywhere and uh, maybe feeling like some of the symptoms were, you know, not going away as quickly as I would have liked them to. Um, but you, you were like, no, no, like, you know, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're being set back, uh, or that your symptoms aren't going to resolve. It's just like, this is part of the process. And sometimes when things come out of your body, you know, you have an increase in, um, symptoms, uh, while they're on their way out. Right. And then that totally reoriented my thinking. And I I was like, wow, it was like a paradigm shift for how I, you know, felt about my healing process. I was like, yeah. And, you know, sometimes when things come out, it's not comfortable. Right. A hundred percent. It's not. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of the times. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, and that, that's an indicator that things are actually happening and changing and working. Yep. For sure. Yeah, but I, you know, I stuck it out. And um, I'm so glad that I did because uh, I just like, I actually thought I was doomed to have pain for the rest of my, you know, period days. Like, so um, it's just incredible. Like I can actually book travel, I can, um, you know, book social events and not worry anymore. Uh, It's just worth like, it's just. It's freedom. Oh, yeah, like it's indescribable. Um, It's really hard for me to articulate the shock like that I have to totally get readjusted to living normally again. It's just, um, I just feel like Mm -hmm. it's quite an adjustment. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. I'm so glad. And honestly, I... I think that's another part, whether it's, I I can't remember if we've talked about that during our consultations, but it is something that I talk with my patients is sometimes we identify with our illness or disease or whatever. And then it's like, you don't know what it's like to not, it feels weird to, to create events or plan social events and not worry about your period because you're so used to protecting and having to do that, that, you know, it, but it's normal. It's normal to feel that lack of confidence because as soon as those Mm -hmm. periods become less painful and it happens more and more frequently now after six, seven, eight periods, you're like, yeah, I can let go of that. You know, I don't have to be scared that that's going to happen to me anymore. Oh, exactly. It's absolutely life-changing to have your freedom back, to be able to just live your life. Like this said, you know, I had been, I had block out Uh, blackout periods where I was like you know I can't plan anything for literally 10 days out of every month because my periods were so irregular and I just 
it yeah. was and I was so extremely exhausted leading up to the periods and then all the like the bloating and the the digestive discomfort and all of that which surrounded it was literally several days of which um I I could not carry on life as normal and so I, it's yeah yeah no um, it's I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of women who are listening to this and like, yep, that's me. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> oh. uh, and the goal here is to share the journey to kind of say that, hey, there's going to be a, there is an answer. Mm-hmm. And um, I'd love for you to share, like, how did you know that I was the right person? Because it's not to say that I'm going to help everybody, but it's mm-hmm. figuring out how do you know that this is going to help? So what were some, cause there was still doubt. There was still, you know, I'm not sure I'm moving in the right direction, all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Any tips that you can give uh, women who are going through the period of trying to figure out who is going to help them and figure the process out, how mm-hmm. to know that they found the right person to help. Yeah. Them? Uh, well, you instilled a lot of confidence in me. Um, you're, <laughs> you, you really, conveyed to me that you knew what you were talking about um, and that you had done your research and you had your education and um, that you were confident because you'd helped other women in the past. And this is your specialty and your area of focus. Um, And you had a method. Versus like a a general, general naturopathic doctor who sees all sorts of, yeah. Yeah, it was a really, you know, night and day difference between the naturopathic doctor that I had engaged in the past um, this is just, you are so, co- um, you're a coach, essentially, you know, guiding and supporting and hands on and very comprehensive with the approach always available. Um, and uh, I just felt like, like you, you could identify the symptoms that I was going through, and you were able to um, articulate in a way that relieved my anxiety, where you're like, oh, no, kind of like, and I've seen this before, you know, this is, this is good. We're on the right track. Um, just, you know, don't give up, keep going. These are indicators that things are changing and, and, and resolving. And um, yeah, so, I mean, I guess you really know what you're talking about. You're, you're researched, you're educated and you're, um, you instill a lot of confidence. Yeah. So someone's just going to coach you and be maybe a special, have a specialty and, in what it is that you're looking for. So whether it's fertility or digestive issues or anxiety, I think that's kind of the, we talked about this with the other naturopaths because I used to not have a specialty either. You know, I used to just see everybody. I would see kids, I would see elderly, I would see people trying to get pregnant and that kind of spread me out pretty thin in terms of my knowledge. So I find that there is a lot of value in niching and being really good at something and then being okay to say, Hey, like this is in my forte, you got to go somewhere else as well. So I, yeah. uh, I would agree with that as your point of like, Hey, find someone who's actually in the field and they're, they're spending all of their time figuring that piece out instead of, you know, different stages of different life, if you will. Oh, yeah, like the specialized knowledge just um, made me feel like I was in good hands. Yeah, lots of trust. That's I appreciate that. Trust. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us where you are now. We've had pain, painless periods for how long? And you know, what's what's next (laughs) on your healing journey? The longest stretch ever. (laughs) So I have um, had some temporary relief with other um, modalities that I've tried, but not for a consistent five month stretch. And, yeah. um, and this last period, just last week was pain free completely. And also a lot of the other symptoms that come with it, like the moodiness and the extreme fatigue and digestive discomfort um, didn't, it was, it was gone. Non-existent. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And what's next on your healing journey? Yeah. So um, I will share that I have uh, breast implants and um, I feel like some of the symptoms that I have not been able to resolve, um, hopefully this will help. So I've got surgery on January 9th in, in about three weeks here. And um, I'm hoping that that will help uh, lift some of the other lingering symptoms. Yeah. Tell us about some of the symptoms, because I think this Mm -hmm. is really valuable. So if I can bring everybody back to the bathtub analogy, 
the cleanliness of the water, the liver, the gallbladder, the, the drainage and the sewer, if uh, there's a lot of different research, if you will, now, and a lot of women talking about breast implants and removal of breast implants and the negative side effects that they've experienced. Because I think we as women have kind of been pushed into a culture of do all these things and they don't have any problems. And then 10 years later, 20 years later, we're figuring out that it's similarly how we were told that there is no issues with taking birth control for forever. Mm-hmm. What I was told that, you know, 16 years old when I was first birth- on birth control, where in reality, it's like, hmm, maybe there are. And so that's kind of that cleanliness of the water that's that's literally just like recirculating in the bathtub. When we have something like that, like breast implants, or we're getting uh, facial work done, whether it's fillers or Botox, those are things that are also adding to the toxic load. And I think a lot of people underestimate how much. And so I'd love to know what symptoms you've been experiencing because it's not things that you think it would be. Right. Yeah. And I've had them for a very long time and I never had symptoms for the first 10 years at all. And I thought, so I never correlated um, my symptoms of fatigue and um, like insomnia and anxiety and brain fog. um, And the breathing. And yeah, a shortness of breath um, with, uh, with these, with, with the implants, because I thought if those, you know, if this was going to be a problem, it would have manifested a lot sooner. Um, And you were actually the first practitioner that I'd engaged that actually suggested that there was maybe a correlation between some of my symptoms and these implants. And I actually was like, no, like that can't be it because they would have happened. You know, I would have had symptoms earlier. Um, but then I started that seed that you planted, I started doing a little independent research. And I realized no, like at the 10 year mark, like they can break down, and then you can start to get symptoms from the, um, the them breaking down, and then, you know, the products, the silicone products circulating through your body. Yeah, I, I hate to bring it up. Like I don't because I know that I think, I don't know what the percentage is of women that would consider getting breast implants done versus get breast implants done. Like I, I think almost every woman, it crosses your mind at some point, right? Cause it's like, whether we see it on TV or like, I remember thinking I would love to get breast implants at whatever stage, because I was an athlete. And didn't <laughs> have, right. And so it's one of those things mm-hmm. that usually when you get it, it's like, you love it. It gave you confidence. It gives you confidence. It gives mm-hmm. So to think about like, oh my God, I don't want to get this out. Like it's such an uncomfortable conversation to have with, for me. And I'm okay with those things now. Cause that's just, I rather say the truth than not, but mm-hmm. it's an uncomfortable yeah. truth to admit to yourself. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I do not want to get them out. <laughs> not at all. I love them. They've really uh, made me feel a lot more confident, confident in my body. Um, and I have very, very minimal breast tissue naturally. So I feel like I really need these, but not at the expense of um, my health. And so um, just, I, I will see how it goes psychologically and emotionally, but I just feel like, you know, I need to get these out for my health and my health needs to be the priority. And I, when I go through the breast implant illness checklist of symptoms because I know there's no definitive test for it I um, can check off pretty much every single symptom on that list yeah with like it gives me goosebumps because I and this is you know one of the reasons of like sharing this with women and why it's so important because it's like it's a really hard thing to go through and to admit and the fact that you just said like man it can't be at the expense of my health Mm-hmm. that's you know that's hard that when we're talking about what I value and where I spend energy that's one of those things right we'll say I value my health but then I'm going out to eat and I'm drinking or whatever it's mm-hmm. like do you though right those actions and I think it's so powerful I'm really excited to, to hear <laughs> what you. happens because you know we don't we we won't know I think you mentioned mm-hmm. mentally emotionally, psychologically yeah for sure there's mm-hmm. gonna be some stuff and it's yeah. a, I, that will be really important to address as well for yourself. Um, mm-hmm. But 
also will be interesting to see what happens symptoms wise, because you've continued your detoxifications, you've continued to take good quality supplements that your body's kind of primed and ready uh, that when we do remove a potential toxin, that your system should just feel better, right? Fairly quickly. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too. I feel like I have been primed for this surgery. It will, my body will have a lot less burden to contend with after these are out. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had some lab work done right before Mm -hmm. in that since the lab work that we had done before when, you know, when we first started working together, you already saw some improvements in there as well. So that's always a good sign. Yeah. And I should mention that was a different approach with you as well is that that just the comprehensive level of testing um, that we engaged right at the outset so that you knew at a chemical level what you were dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, I just actually had a message in my account right before we jumped on. She was like, I just started supplements and like two to two or three days ago, but like my period pain is gone. Is that possible? <laughs> it is, you know, like it is. That's the difference between like guessing and taking mm-hmm. a handful of supplements. Mm-hmm. Like, here's exactly why. And I don't know why you have the period pain, but I have an idea. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Any of these mm-hmm. seven things that came out red or yellow could be mm-hmm. causing the pain. But if we can attack it from different angles, it's like, is it possible? She's like, I'm kind of amazed, but comprehensive, <laughs> right? Like I don't, I'm cautiously optimistic. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, the term that we've used many times and my, my patients mm-hmm. use all the time because it's like, yeah, that's totally normal because it hasn't happened that many times yet. We got to build mm-hmm. the confidence. The confidence comes from doing this over and over again. Yes. And actually I should say I did experience improvement. Like there was a reduction in, in period pain as soon as I got on your program. Um, but it just like, I was like impatient to get rid of all the pain. (laughs) You were like an eight out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. Yeah. I I went down to like a six. (laughs) Yeah. But that's, that's, and we look for that, like eight out of 10 improvement is great because it's not going to go. But I think the other thing that you said that was really big at the beginning was like, I recovered much quicker. So Mm -hmm. my energy wasn't in the gutter for like a week after it was only a couple of days and I came out of it. So it's like, yes, we're on the right track, you know? Yes, absolutely. My energy, um, some of the digestive symptoms resolved pretty much right away. Uh, so that was amazing. I was, <laughs> I just, you know, and still, even like after having five pain free periods, I'm still thinking, is this for real? You know, I'm really, I am still cautiously optimistic because I'm like, I, you know, I've never had this kind of relief for this long. And I'm just, just thinking, oh, like knocking on wood, like I hope this sustains. Like I just hope. <laughs> yeah. But I know like so many of the other symptoms have resolved. I had a gluten intolerance. Now I can have gluten. I would react to dairy before and now I can have cheese and not react. Um, so it's just like the food um, sensitivities have resolved. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, we've talked about that as well is, Hey, how, if you continue to do the things that I have taught you, which is understanding that whole, hey, what is coming into my bucket? Like what's filling in my bathtub and how well is the other stuff working? Over time, you're just going to continue to get better and better and better because it just takes time. Just like disease doesn't develop overnight. um, It doesn't go away overnight, but your health also doesn't just overnight magically. I I use a lot the analogy of building a muscle. You're not going to go to the gym once or even in a month have a ripped body. Like it just, that's not how it works. And so if you think about it like that, then it's like, oh, okay, my body literally needs time to rebuild old cells and to get rid of old cells that weren't work, uh, working properly. Like, for example, we all have cancer cells, like we all have them, but the body is working on getting rid of them. And it's the balance of, hey, it can't get rid of it. And so then it goes out of control versus, you know, the body can keep it under control. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just taking time to build more confidence. I'm really excited Mm -hmm. to see what happens, you know, in a couple of weeks for you and really Mm -hmm. a couple of months because it will take some time to recover post-surgery, but I'd love Mm -hmm. for you to let me know how that goes. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is unnerving, you know, and, and I know there's going to be an adjustment because I'm going to have to get used to my new shape. But at this point, I really can't wait to get them out. Um, yep. Just for my health, I've, I've done everything I can to have a healthy lifestyle. And this is the final frontier. <laughs> For sure. For now that you know of, and then we'll see what's left, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's always like, something it, to work on. There's always something to work on. And like, um, like the doctor, the surgeon was saying, he's like, well, we won't know until we get them out, you know, if this was the, the reason for um, some of these symptoms. But when, you know, when I go through that checklist, I sure, I sure can check off a lot of those boxes of the breast implant illness. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. uh, you know, I have some docs in the natural space, like functional medical doctors who specialize in helping women uh, prepare for surgery to mm -hmm. explant and then also to support post-surgery. So what you're doing in terms of protocols, the drainage and, you know, the detoxification you did before, like you said, you feel primed. I yeah. like, I know that that's going to make your experience a lot different from somebody who hasn't had those, uh, that mm -hmm. preparation and even the support after because it just helps the body go through it a little bit quicker, right? Because you're just giving yeah. the nutrients and the things that you need, as opposed to the body just trying to draw that from food or rest or whatever. So I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I'd love yeah, to thank leave, you. leave people off with, you know, a couple of lessons that mm -hmm. they can learn from your case and your situation mm -hmm. and any golden nuggets. Yeah. So, I mean, I did just have a pre-op uh, chemistry panel done and an EKG and um, uh, everything was perfectly clear. Whereas when I had done the testing at the outset of uh, our relationship, um, you know, there was some some organ distress showing up and some imbalances, but everything is perfect. So, and also my arrhythmia um, has resolved as well. I, 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 it's significantly reduced. So I, I used to have heart palpitations like regularly, and now it's kind of a, an occasionally rare thing. Um, okay. So the supplements are very high quality supplements. Um, just I think probably the best we can get our hands on, which was just yep. made me feel like I was putting um, the best I could into my body. Um, and I know, like, I mean, it is an investment, uh, you know, um, this program is, is fairly expensive, but I, I honestly would have paid anything to have my life back and um, worth every dollar. So uh, to, to be able to live, um, pain-free is just worth every dollar. So I, you know, that's all I can really say. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. so, I mean, what would you say are like some lessons from your case in terms of um, that listeners can take away with that can walk away and say, okay, this, this is something that I can move on. Cause if there's, they're in the exact same situation that you were six months ago, eight months ago, right. Having mm -hmm. the pain yeah. What are some things that they can take away from your case? I have, so I have the healthiest lifestyle you could ever imagine. And I have um, literally engaged the services of every practitioner and every modality that's come across my path. I've done a lot of independent research. Um, yes, you're a researcher. <laughs> yeah, I am a researcher. I like to research. Um, and I just, I've tried everything and I was getting frustrated and I, but there is, um, this helped me. So just hang in there because if, if my case can be resolved and I can experience, um, having like living without pain after having such extreme pain for eight years, um, this, it will work. If you just stick it out, um, it will work. Uh, I'm sure. living proof. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And so keep potentially doing some more of your own research and making sure mm -hmm. that you are kind of interviewing practitioners and looking based on what the experience that practitioner has to mm -hmm. be able to support you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like the specialized knowledge and the strategy, like you have a very methodical strategy, which I really appreciated. Um, it's sort of feels like it's tried, tested and true. And, um, you know, each stage is um, designed for a very specific purpose because you have the knowledge I don't to articulate this, but I just feel like you knew which organ to tackle first because when this organ is functioning well and then you can 
this will function well. And, you know, I just feel like I'm unclogged. I feel like all this awesome. uh, gunk which was stuck inside my body causing me problems and backing me up um, is just like flushed out and cleared out and uh, alleviated a lot of pressure off my system. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, welcome. honestly, thank you for sharing your journey. I think it's so important for people to hear from I, like I said, I can share on Instagram and on social, like, here is how I'm working with patients. But when the, my patients are courageous enough and willing enough to share their story, because I know it's a vulnerable thing to share. It's, it really helps people because that's where I get the mm -hmm. message. Like I found my practitioner or when I did these lab tests, like this is what really helped or the detoxification. And you never know what's going to click for, uh, for a person and when they need to hear it. But just knowing that mm -hmm. living in pain is not normal and getting your uterus out is not the only option that's out there. That's what I wanted to do before I met you. I was, I said to my husband, this is it. Like, if this doesn't work, I'm getting a hysterectomy. Like so sad. I'm, yeah. I, I'm just so sad. Like when I think about that now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't, you don't have to do that at all. And I'm really glad that your case was I would say you're one of the, the fastest response I, I had <laughs> in terms of pain relief. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, within a couple of months, we had you down to a manageable level yeah. of pain and then like fairly yeah. quickly, almost to nothing. And that's just a testament to doing the lab testing and the, the testament to you already having a really good foundation, right? Mm -hmm. If you're coming to me eating mcdonald's or highly processed <laughs> foods and right versus we yeah. just needed to make a couple little tweaks and all of a sudden it was like and and you were very willing you did the castor oil packs you did the red light therapy you got the water filtration all within like that first month because you were like mm -hmm. i'm just gonna do all the things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it, it worked so i'm really it glad. worked it was yeah. so extreme. I was like, I, w I, I was so conscientious. So you really do need to do everything. Like, you know, I, I did everything you told me to do right away because I just needed, I was so desperate for relief. I would have done anything you told me to do. And I did, you know, I was like, you have to. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> so yeah. you, you do need to be dedicated to the protocols. Totally. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Cause that's true. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, one of the things I'll say, the three reasons that it's not working, whatever you're doing, whether it's fertility journey or health journey, I, you know, I, I look at those, uh, very synergistically, if you will, they, mm -hmm. they work together, but it's, you're either not doing the right things at all. So you're working on something that's not relevant to your problem. You're doing the right things, but not enough. Mm -hmm. And then you're not pivoting or you're not changing the protocol, because the thing that's preventing the pain now versus, and that's what I think you talked about in terms of systemizing, Hey, we got, we can't, we can't do the liver until the colon is moving. So we got to do mm -hmm. the, and then we got to focus on the kidneys and the lymph. And then we focus, you know, get more into the cellular health of mitochondria and pulling out toxins on the cellular level. But it's like, you can't do that from the get go, you know, you can do heavy metals and all that jazz. It's just going to make yeah. you feel I tried to do this on my own and I, I tried to, you know, I just was spent so much time researching this on my own and just could not get any relief and then, you know, engaged everybody I could and got no relief. So just so grateful. So incredibly thank thankful. Thank you for giving me my life back. Literally. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you, Mariska, for saying that. I'm, I thank you for being a really great student. That's what I honestly, I love it when I'm like, Hey, if you just do the things that I tell you, it's going to work. Yeah. But it's really hard to get people to do the things. Yeah. And, and a lot of people tough. will say, yeah, I will do it. And then they're like, yeah, but not that much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. are a, a very good example of like, no, mm -hmm. I am just going to do it. And, uh, yeah. you know, unfortunately the pain was the thing that was driving you, but yeah. It, like you said, it worked. So we're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next chapter. So thank yeah. you for sharing. And like I said, keep me updated on your journey. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next chapter is for you and your healing journey, because I think it's going to be big. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I will keep you updated. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys, for tuning in. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>